morning, uh, noon, afternoon, night, whatever your time zone in, and welcome to the uh, second day of, of State of the Map 2020 online conference and to the academic track. Uh, we're really happy that we're, we're able to um, offer another edition of the academic track this year. It's the third year in a row. We had two very successful um, track days in the two previous uh, State of the Map. And we're looking forward for this year's track, um, which um, will include 10 talks, different topics, starting from building completeness, uh, discussions about humanitarian mapping, um, corporate editing, identifying informal settlements, and so on. Um, and um, just before we start the first talk, uh, a few notes. First of all, Anyone interested in uh, open street map research, academic research, is welcome to join the um, OSM Science mailing list, uh, where we sometimes have discussions about research-related issues. Um, second, if it's your first um, state of the map talk for this year, um, you can ask questions using the session pad. Um, we will, after I'll introduce uh, our first speaker, we'll watch the recording of the talk and then we'll have a Q&A session. Um, so if you want to ask questions during the talk and also during the Q&A session, you just need to log on to the pad and write your question down. To log on to the pad, um, you need to, uh, I'll share my screen for that. Um, you need to, um, um, just go to the program on the website, um, look for your uh, spe the specific talk we're in, this one, Assessing Global Open Street Map Building Completeness, uh, and so on. Click on it, and then on the left-hand uh, side, you will have the session pad link, which you can click on, and then just add your questions here uh, freely. Uh, beside that, if you want to know more about the talks or having uh, just before the conference, um, the scientific committee, which includes Marco Minini and uh, Levente and Peter Mooney and Godwin Yeboah and Serena Kotze and, and myself, we published uh, the proceedings uh, of the abstracts of the academic track. Um, you can find them on Zenodo or just Google State of the Map 2020 uh, proceedings, and you can read more about each talk and see the details of the different authors so you're welcome to join in, it's open access. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's it regarding uh, um, this kind of more technical notes. And I think we can move into our first speaker, which is uh, Philip Miliaki. Uh, he's an assistant professor in GIS at the National University of Singapore. His main domain of interest are 3D city models and spatial data quality. He holds a PhD from the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. And um, we're very happy to have Philip here and hear about this uh, issue of 3D modeling and building completeness and so on. And I think now it's time for uh, us to watch the, the talk. Hello everyone, I'm Philip Wieski from the National University of Singapore. Thanks for having me at this event and thanks to the organizers for putting it together. Today I'm presenting a project on generating 3D city models from OpenStreetMap, particularly focusing on assessing the quality of OSM data to understand the potential of doing so. The work is co-authored with Ang Lee Min, who is student researcher on this project. So at NUS, we have a project for developing a method to ease the generation of 3D city models on a large scale, so we can make them more accessible, especially in areas where they have not been previously available. OpenStreetMap is an important part of the project, and one of the aims is enrich buildings from OpenStreetMap with information on their height. Once the data is generated, another part of the project is investigating use cases for which they are useful, which I will also briefly talk about. 
The project is funded by our university. We are just a few months in the project, so what is presented in this talk are just very preliminary results. And one of the aims of this presentation is rather to gather feedback and ideas, but also to spread the word about this project, which may be found useful to others in the community. Before I proceed, I would like to acknowledge my colleague, Yong Shin, a new researcher in the project who started working recently and has provided a few preliminary results. And also I'd like to thank the Netherlands Organization for Scientific Research for funding a previous project which this project builds on. To give some context to the work, especially to those who haven't had much touch with 3D city models before, I'll spend a few minutes talking about them. 3D city models are urban scale 3D representations of the built environment, representing our 3D world more truthfully, essentially upgrading traditional 2D GIS datasets. They have been used across uh, multiple disciplines and they have en enabled new spatial applications or have improved existing analysis. This slide shows an example I always include when talking about 3D city models. It's a view shed analysis from a window of a house. On the left, you can see it done with a 2D dataset, but running the same analysis with a 3D city model on the right adds more accuracy and insights. 3D city models are definitely not new, but the developments around them have surged in the last uh, five to 10 years, with not only lots of papers published in academia, but also penetration in disciplines beyond the geospatial field altogether with an increasing availability of data and software. And further, many people know 3D city models just for some cool visualizations, but they are actually now increasingly finding their role in spatial analysis. Estimating shadows uh, is another example. We can use 3D city models to estimate the level of sunlight on the street level. It is an analysis that is not possible without 3D data. Among different applications, this analysis helps to understand the thermal comfort of pedestrians. Since uh, the state of the map community has a pretty much open science uh, stance, I think it's relevant to mention that this analysis has been done entirely using open data and open source software. Some further examples, uh, some practitioners uh, use 3D city models to make uh, noise pollution maps. So we can use 3D city models to estimate the impact of noise in different traffic scenarios, for example, when planning new tram lines in cities. These data sets are indispensable for wind flow analysis, an example of another use case. They help us to understand the impact of new urban scenarios on the wind flow. Here is an example from Singapore done by the National Mapping Agency here. This use case is especially useful in tropical climates. So with all the increasing use cases, it is not really a surprise that many cities uh, have adopted them and uh, use them for various purposes. Today, there are dozens of cities that have a 3D city model and many of them release them as open data. One of my favorites is the data set by New York City, which has more than a million of buildings modeled in 3D, and they have released this as open data. So how are they made? There are many ways to produce 3D city models, like from photogrammetric surveys or converting them from architectural models. But the most common method so far is extrusion. That is to take advantage of existing 2D datasets, such as topographic maps, and extrude buildings and other features to their heights. The heights are obtained from different sources, most commonly from LiDAR point clouds, or as an attribute stored in the building data. And this method results in the so-called block models or LOD1 models with flat rooftops. The topic of 3D city models is not new to the OpenStreetMap community. In fact, it has been around for more than a decade. There are different ways to obtain 3D city models from OSM. First, from the stored height of the building or its number of floors, and then extruding the building footprint. Second, 
it is possible to provide more detailed representations using certain tags. For example, the type of uh, roof of a building, resulting in 3D models with a higher level of detail. This is an example of OSM data in 3D, thanks to the project OSM Buildings. It is the central business district in Singapore. It is interesting because it shows uh, data that arise from both types of modeling. On the left, you can see a few skyscrapers extruded to their height according to the number of floors in OSM. But you can also see a couple of nicely modeled buildings such as landmarks next to the water at the bottom and bottom right of the image. So where is the gap and why are we doing this research? OpenStreetMap is great, but most 3D datasets in the world remain procured by local governments. Often they are not released as open data. And they're almost exclusive to developed countries and major cities. Virtually all 3D open datasets are from Europe and North America. And why is that? Why are 3D city models not available widely? The main reason for this limited availability is that they can be expensive or complicated to create because collecting heights of buildings is cumbersome. If you check OSM data outside, outside city centers, you will see that buildings more often than not have no height information whatsoever. So they cannot be extruded to their true height. In fact, in many places around the world, buildings have low completeness of heights or the number of floors. There are many places that are wonderfully mapped with an impressive level of quality, but data on building heights or number of floors can be entirely missing even in such places. As an example, I recently analyzed OpenStreetMap data for 11 countries in Southeast Asia. Again, OSM data in some places looks fantastic, but in most cases, the share of buildings that have height information is lower than 1%. Even in the best case, like in small countries such as Brunei and Singapore, the completeness is just around 10%. And this is not surprising because not only it takes time to collect such data, or it might be difficult to do so, but another possible reason is that mappers might not be motivated to collect them as they may not be convinced that they are important. So we are also working on use cases emphasizing the potential and benefit of having 3D buildings generated from OSM, not just for some nice visualizations. The research question that our project is attempting to tackle is how can we increase the availability of heights of buildings in OpenStreetMap? Is there an alternative method to collect the building heights? Our hypothesis is that we can predict the heights of buildings solely from building footprints. That is existing 2D data in OpenStreetMap. Going back to the figure I have shown a few slides earlier, we are looking into whether we can skip the second step of having height information of all buildings simply by predicting them from the 2D data such as geometry of buildings and attributes. And actually, this is not a new idea. I personally worked on the preceding work three years ago, where we built a regression model in the forest to predict the heights of buildings from their footprints. The work was focused on uh, Rotterdam in the Netherlands, and this project looks whether we can scale it globally. The image on this slide shows the 3D model of Rotterdam generated without height data. I should mention that in the meantime, there has been uh, other related work, for example, doing something similar for the United States and Germany, giving assurance that we might be on the right path and that this project is relevant.
In a nutshell, the idea is simple. For each building, we compute a series of predictors used by the regression model. These predictors come from three groups. First, we take several geometry indicators for which we need just the polygon of a building. For example, we quantify the shape complexity and the number of neighboring buildings. We are doing that because we have realized that uh, these are associated with the height of a building. Second, we take socioeconomic data on a district scale. For example, we have realized that the income of, uh, of a neighborhood is negatively correlated with the heights of the buildings there. Third, we incorporated various cadastral attributes such as year of construction. And what we did in Rotterdam was surprisingly accurate. The mean absolute error of predicting heights was uh, below one meter. Now we want to scale this to OpenStreetMap globally to increase the completeness of heights, helping us to generate 3D city models everywhere. But there is a big uh, but. What we did in Rotterdam was also very localized. We do not have detailed socioeconomic data and cadastral data globally that we can use. And even if we did have, the predictive models would probably not be very transferable elsewhere. So for the global scale and doing so using OpenStreetMap data, we will have to use only the 2D geometry of buildings and making most of the predictors that we can come up with. Training the regression model in one of the cities in the Netherlands was easy. The government has an open point cloud dataset from which the building heights can be estimated. But because the ground truth for building heights, which is required for training the predictive models is available not for many cities around the world, we were thinking about training predictive models in one city where we have the point clouds and then using the same predictive models to predict the heights in another city. And that is what we did. We trained the predictive model in one Dutch province and applied it to other ones and evaluated the accuracy of the predictions of the building heights. And how does that work? Uh, using the geometry of footprints in OpenStreetMap resulted in the prediction of heights having a mean absolute error of uh, 2.4 meters, which is about the height of uh, one story. This is not extremely accurate, uh, but it's also not bad given the circumstances and it might be better than nothing. We think that the 3D models generated with this level of accuracy will still be useful for some use cases that would otherwise not be possible because of the lack of data. For example, 3D models obtained with such a currency level could be useful for creating shadow maps like the one on this image. And uh, this may help understanding the solar exposure of streets and thermal comfort. Still, what we did is mostly within the same country and might not work well somewhere else. So we are not getting fully excited at this stage. We can do the same for other countries, but eventually not many of them because LiDAR data is scarcely available. For example, we don't think that we can train the predictive models in Mexico and expect that they will work well in Kenya. But what we are thinking is doing something different. In each city, we plan to focus on the fraction of buildings in OSM that have height information to train city-specific regression models and then predict the heights of the remaining portion of buildings that do not have them. And that is where research on understanding OSM completeness is crucial. It is crucial because we need to understand the areas that are mapped well for two reasons, for training the regression models and for generating the 3D city models. 
it doesn't make sense to generate 3D models in areas where the building completeness is low. And also, it doesn't make sense to train regression models to predict the heights in areas where the height completeness is very, very low. If I had to draw a diagram of this uh, intertwined uh, completeness, it will look like this. First, OSM represents a subset of all buildings in the world. It is quite complete, but there are areas that are not entirely mapped. So understanding building completeness is the crucial first step to help us identify areas that we should skip. Second, height information is available for a fraction of buildings that are mapped. Understanding patterns of completeness of this type of information will help us focus on areas where we can train the regression models. So we can predict the heights of the rest of the buildings, increasing the potential and completeness of 3D city models. This research is uh, conceptually simple. As a start, we have uh, focused on the capital cities of the 11 countries in Southeast Asia. For most cities, the building completeness is high, so we focus on the completeness of heights or number of floors. We have calculated the completeness of the height attributes and aggregated the percentage for cells of one square kilometer, and this is the result. Um, it is very interesting to see that some cells have 100% of completeness, while the neighborhood next door has almost 0%. So this research on completeness helps us to understand that we might be able to focus on these small pockets that have full completeness to train the predictive models and then apply them to the rest of the city. That was the simple part, but the tricky part is the completeness of footprints. There have been many studies on estimating the completeness of building data in OSM. Many of them are focused on one country, and they do one-to-one -one comparison thanks to authoritative data, usually for the government. For example, they calculate the number of buildings in OSM and compare it to the number of buildings in the government counterpart. But these methods do not work on the global scale. The main focus is uh, the lack of uh, authoritative data they're, and they're computationally expensive. But also there are different definitions around the world what a building is. How are we tackling that? The method that we are developing is uh, simplified. We think that it is very difficult to do one-to-one -one comparisons and it doesn't make sense to do so on a global scale. Instead, we rather focus on estimating the building completeness roughly in patches. Instead of individual buildings, we focus on areas by partitioning the world in one by one kilometer cells, the same as in one of the earlier slides. And for each, we estimate the approximate level of footprint completeness rather than doing so precisely for each building. We train a predictive model that uses remotely sensed data to estimate the proportion of the built-up area in each cell, and then compare it with the percentage of the area in the cell that is covered by OpenStreetMap. At the moment, we are implementing this in Google Earth Engine using Landsat 8 data. The results we have are very preliminary. We are running the code on a few locations in East and Southeast Asia. And unfortunately, we do not have done a validation yet, so we cannot tell how reliable it is. But we learned a few things so far, and these are very similar to the issues encountered during height estimations. First, the predictive models trained in one area may not work well elsewhere. The second issue is computational. Even though our method strives for simplicity, it is still computationally expensive because there are dozens of uh, millions of cells around the world to analyze. 
We are wondering whether we actually need to do so for absolutely every cell in the world, or can we rather pick a subset in each country, like 5% of its land area, and run the analysis for that subset to get a general idea of completeness for each country. Most completeness studies that focus on one country and uh, not globally are thought of, but maybe when assessing the completeness uh, globally, we do not have to be that detailed. For the next steps, we plan to incorporate other datasets. For example, roads in OpenStreetMap are quite complete and they may serve as an indicator of amount of buildings in an area. We plan to validate the method as well. That has been uh, our work so far. If you find this project of interest, I would like to invite you to connect with us and discuss a possible collaboration. I also hope that if generating the 3D models works out, that other researchers will find it useful in their activities. We'll definitely make it available as open data as soon as we have something. And once the pandemic is over, we are welcome to having visiting scholars as well at our research group. Uh, feel free to contact us if interested. We are planning to work further on OSM related topics. Thank you and thanks again to the organizers of the event for all their work. Okay, uh, thank you, Philip, for a very uh, nice kickoff to, to the academic track. Uh, I can already see in the, um, in the question pad that uh, your talk generated quite a bit of interest with uh, Indie Bio and Netfoot really mixed out the project and looking forward for the, the results and how it can uh, contribute to, um, to uh, um, uh, the project itself. I think it really was a nice overview um, of, of 3D modeling and 3D modeling in the context of OpenStreetMap and the challenges and opportunities that exist. Um, so uh, I'll go straight to the questions. There are quite a few of them, so I'm not sure whether we'll be able to go through all of them, uh, but we'll go, them, we'll go through them one by one and see how far can we go. Uh, anyone else can uh, can contact Philip individually and, and inquire further. Um, so uh, we have an enormous question uh, about how can we easily estimate building height while mapping. Uh, one comment already says that there's a, um, a, there's a user named Colossus that presented a, a budget LIDAR for crowdsourcing 3D data. Uh, but it's probably only suitable for uh, small buildings. Uh, Philip, do you have any other kinds of recommendations? Okay, first of all, uh, thanks again for having me here, and uh, thanks everyone for the interesting questions. Uh, regarding the estimation of building heights while mapping, actually there are two things, um, two types of information. First is the building height in meters, and second is actually building levels. And most mappers, I would say like, uh, 10 times uh, more of them uh, focus on uh, mapping the building levels, which are obviously much easier to map because it's really easy to count the number of floors. On the other hand, it's really difficult to estimate the height, uh, but I've seen there have been some developments recently. So I've seen there is an app on the phone. Uh, I think it works only on iOS that uh, measures the height of a building from uh, pictures. And the second, uh, uh, I heard recently of a method by, if you have public access to a building, by uh, counting the number of steps to the, uh, to the rooftop and then multiplying it with the height of each step. So there are, there are a few methods, but it's way more difficult than, um, than counting the number of uh, building levels. Okay, thanks. Interesting ideas on speaking and can be uh implemented in some cases. Um, 
Albi Odan, which is uh, the speaker, the next speaker, uh, also uh, with an interest in building completeness, asks, can you discuss more about the future importance for your random forest model in your st study in the Netherlands? And I would add, uh, can you say something about the predictive power of the data that we don't have in, in OpenStreetMap, like socioeconomic data, or not necessarily have like socioeconomic data and cadastro data? And do you think there are more variables that you can uh, integrate into the model, which you can use in OpenStreet, can get from OpenStreetMap data, which will assist in achieving higher level of, of uh, accuracy? Okay, so the work uh, in the Netherlands, uh, in Rotterdam, has been done three years ago. It was uh, using cadastral data. And we were focused on predicting the heights. And uh, we had 10, um, 10 uh, predictors. And we built uh, 17 different predictive models uh, based on different combinations of the availability. So, for example, in one scenario, we had the number of floors, we had the floor area of a building, we had the socioeconomic data. In another uh, predictive model, we had only three predictors that have been uh, calculated from the geometry of the footprint. In the first case, that was ideal. Uh, the number of stories was obviously the most uh, useful predictor. Uh, but in those uh, that we, where we had only the geometry, the most useful predictor was the floor area, followed by the complexity of the shape of the, of the footprint. And uh, at the moment, we are using about five to six uh, predictors that can be uh, uh, computed from open street, street map uh, data. And there are many more predictors, like we can use certain tags. But the issue is that we are looking for predictors that are consistently available on the worldwide scale. So there are some tags that will be very useful, but I'm not sure if it makes sense to use them if they're available only for 1% uh, of the buildings around the world. At the moment, we are putting a lot of faith uh, in the floor area uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the footprint. Um, great, thanks. Um, yeah, question about like, also your work in the Netherlands. Um, are cities in the Netherlands very similar for this to work? Uh, I could imagine that, according to the person writing the question, I could imagine that it could be more complicated in countries with all the new cities. So, yes, uh, I think uh, everyone who has been in the Netherlands knows that cities uh, can look quite similar, uh, which goes in, uh, which goes to the advantage of these uh, methods. Uh, and also, I'd like just to follow up with another, uh, to another question. There was a question about the ground plane. Uh, the answer is yes. We assumed a flat ground plane because uh, in the Netherlands, uh, all cities are relatively flat, uh, situated at around elevation zero. Uh, but, of course, we need to take into account terrain in other countries, and that's what we are planning to do in the next phase of the project. Okay. Uh, yeah, so now there's a bunch of questions about um, uh, other sources of, of, of that or information that you might want to consider uh, for, for to be integrating your models, whether it's building shadows from satellite imagery, and uh, SAR data from Sentinel-1, and uh, um, image recognition, and, and pillory, and, and all sorts of stuff. So did you consider adding uh, other kinds of, of uh, data sources for, to your models that may be available? For the predictions of the heights, we are currently focusing only on vector data from OpenStreetMap. We are not including any Earth observation uh, uh, data like uh, Radar, uh, radar data or optical imagery. Uh, it's, it's for a simple reason. The first is that we are not really remote sensing uh, specialists. Uh, but second, we would like to develop a method that can uh, be like self-sufficient that can only use uh, OpenStreetMap data as input. Okay. Um, let's see what other questions we have here. Um, which we haven't cut. Uh, well, there's one one commentator saying that uh, 
Exeter in the UK has around 35% for the building coverage of the majority of buildings. It would be a good training set and provides the link. So thank you for that. I'm sure Philip would uh, yeah, enjoy I'll it. it down. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But there is also an issue with that because if we train uh, the models in the UK, we are not sure that they will work outside the UK. It's the same problem like with the Netherlands. So it definitely helps uh, in order to uh, train um, country-specific or city-specific predictive models. But we are looking more for a global solution that would work everywhere, especially in developing uh, countries. Uh, um... Another question is, isn't the geometry a bit fuzzy? Some people map very thoroughly, other map basic footprint. So uh, it's, it's a question about bias, uh, basically, in a sense. And I would add to that, add that, that in, do you, did you notice that there's a bias in the completeness, a spatial bias in the completeness of, of, of uh, height data? Uh, I think you mentioned in the talk yourself that uh, Usually in city centers, you get this data, but outside of that, it's it's pretty rare. And how yes. that affect? So quality will definitely play a role. Uh, but regarding um, completeness, indeed, we noticed that uh, there is more height information available for landmarks and for CBDs. So the predictive model might be a bit biased uh, towards these well-mapped uh, areas. But too early to discuss that, we haven't uh, made a thorough analysis yet. Great, thanks for this answer. Um, nice clarification according to the person asking the question. Um, okay, can you... Sorry? I said, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Um, can you explain once again how Landsat raster is being used to predict completeness, or is it being used to? All right. So uh, yeah, maybe I wasn't uh, really clear in that part. Uh, we are not using uh, imagery to predict the heights of buildings, but the Earth observation data so far is used to uh, understand the completeness of buildings. So uh, regarding uh, Earth observation data and rasters, the answer is yes and no. We are using that data for predicting the completeness of buildings, but not for predicting the heights yet. And I think uh, based on uh, the amount of questions uh, regarding our observation data, I think we will reconsider that part of the project. I think we might then consider including our observation data as well to predict the heights of buildings. Yeah, and I, I think it's it's a subtle point here in your talk that there are, we're talking about two level of completeness. There's building footprint completeness uh, which is uh, important even before we use uh, uh, we, we go further into 3D or height data completeness. Uh, yeah, so it's it's two different and but interrelated issues. Um, I I would ask, um, let's say uh, the OSM community decides to go uh, full uh, full follow on 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 3D mapping. Um, to support projects like yourself um, and just decide to hypothetically go city by city and add height data. Um, how much, what is the rate of completeness you would expect is required for uh, the models to work uh, uh, well enough? Mm. Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, we have been testing uh, different uh, levels of percentages uh, for the training data in the work so far in the Netherlands. Uh, and I think uh, that we concluded that between 5 and 10% uh, of the of the building should be mapped in order to estimate the remaining buildings with a sufficient level of uh, accuracy. But again, we did that so far for only one country. So this might be quite different for other countries. And given that uh, currently the completeness on average in cities is uh, less than 1%, 5% uh, might still be a bit too far. So I think we'll have to be happy with only 1%. Okay, so uh, all you uh, OpenStreetMappers that uh, want to contribute to uh, 3D modeling, uh, 
take notice uh, about how much you need to uh, complete. Um, yeah, um, thank you very much. I think uh, people were quite interested in your talk and learned a lot. And we would be happy to hear you talking about it in a year or two about results and see, see what we can learn from that. And I think with that, we would end the talk. So thank you again. Thank you. I really appreciate the interest uh, from everyone. Yeah, and uh, see you on the next talk, uh, which would be also about building completeness by Ardi Oden. Uh, I hope I pronounce it uh, right, which would start in about five minutes. So we'll see you.